Hi again, it's Vu from Be A Nigger. If you've been following me at all over the past couple of weeks, you know that I've been talking a ton about functional training, or specifically the training of functional movements and why this sort of training is so important in our day-to-day -day lives. As part of that message, I also talked a lot about the burpee and why I personally believe that the burpee is the king of all exercises. The burpee is a function of so much more than just strength and endurance. In fact, to execute the perfect burpee, you need the perfect combination of agility, mobility, flexibility, stability, coordination, and reflexes. Last week, I spoke about stability. This week, I'd like to talk about flexibility and mobility. Before we can talk about the importance of flexibility and mobility, it's important for us to understand the fundamental difference between the two fitness terms. Now, the line between them is often blurred and confused, and that's understandable, because even though they shouldn't be used interchangeably, they certainly are correlated, and limitations and restrictions in either one will affect how well you move. Let's make this as simple as possible. Your flexibility, in its essence, is your range of motion and your ability to move through your joints using some form of external assistance, whether that be your body weight, another limb, an apparatus of some sort, or even another person. Take this stretch for instance. I want to take my non-stretching arm and I'm going to assist the movement by pulling on the stretching arm, thereby stretching and lengthening my deltoids, my mid traps, and my rhomboids. This is what's known as a passive stretch because I'm getting external assistance and my full range of motion is really a function of how tight my muscles are. This is flexibility. And flexibility can be thought of as your ability to bend without breaking. So if flexibility is my range of motion with assistance, mobility must be my range of motion without. Let's go back to the exact same stretch. As you can see, my range of motion on the exact same movement varies quite a bit depending on whether or not I get that external assistance. My range of motion without the assistance or my active range of motion is much, much smaller. This is what we refer to as mobility, and mobility can be thought of as your ability to move freely and easily. Mobility is the complex and complicated cousin of flexibility, and is a function of many factors including strength, neuromuscular response, and flexibility itself. So as you can see, there is a fundamental difference between flexibility and mobility. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to refer to the two terms cohesively as mobility. On a daily basis, we move and we move a lot. We walk, we jog, we run, we lift, we throw, we move forward and backwards, we move side to side, we move down and up. We are literally experts at moving, but that doesn't imply that we're experts at the movements themselves. Does that make sense? Just because we're moving all day doesn't mean that we're moving correctly efficiently or effectively. Mobility has a huge part to play in this. All right, you get the point. Mobility is extremely important in our day-to-day -day lives. Unfortunately for us, not many are naturally gifted in mobility. In fact, the majority of us are extremely limited or restricted in movement. Think of your common squat, for instance. A lot of the time, when we can't sink into a deep squat, it is often perceived that we don't have the strength to go through this movement, when, in fact, the lack of mobility is just as likely a culprit. Mobility is just one of those things. You either train it and you get it, or you don't and you don't. So with that being said, here are some of the mobility exercises that I do. All right, the first mobility exercise I'm gonna show you is gonna help you increase the mobility in your ankles. Let me remind you again that if you have any history at all of joint injuries, do consult with your doctors before you try these exercises. To set up for the exercise, I'm going to attach a strap to the ankle that I'm working on. As you can see, I've already got a strap on. I'm going to add some resistance, and I'm going to make sure that I have enough resistance such that my leg feels like it's being pulled back when I get into the starting position of a lunge. Like this. I want to make sure that I'm firmly planted through the ball of my back foot, firmly planted through my front foot, 
and that my hips are tracking and pointing forward. To go through this exercise, I'm going to lunge forward, driving my knee forward and extending the range of motion far beyond what I'm used to. And as you can see, as I do this, I'm going to increase that dorsiflexion in my ankle. Pretty straightforward, right? Now, even though this is a bodyweight exercise, and it is very, very safe, you do have to listen to your body. It will tell you when you need to stop. Did you get it? Good. On to the next exercise. I want to show you two variations of this exercise. To set up for the first one, I want to set this pad on my hamstring, have it nice and tight, and I'm going to get into a deep, back lunge. I'm going to get myself into a deep stretch when we're feeling a nice pull here and I'm going to rock back and forth. Back and forth. And then I'm going to sink a little bit deeper and I'm going to hold. I can really, really feel that. All right, on to the next variation. This other variation is more or less the same idea, only this time I want to have the pad set up nice and high on my quad instead of my hamstring, and I'm going to get into a forward lunge instead of a back one. All right, I'm all set up. I can begin to feel the stretch on my hip flexor. And I'm gonna rock forward and back. Forward and back. Forward. And I'm just gonna hold for a little bit. And back. Did you get that? So I just showed you mobility exercises for both your ankles and your hips. And it's really the combination of these mobility exercises that will make functional movements such as squats and lunges much, much easier, which will translate to daily activities such as picking up heavy loads or picking up children. The last set of mobility exercises I want to show you is going to help you increase the mobility in your shoulders. You can't forget about these. Shoulder injuries are amongst some of the most common injuries out there. Now, shoulders. Because they're capable of such a large range of motion, I want to show you several different exercises, all hitting a different motion and hitting them from a different angle. Are you ready? Let's go. And as you just saw, shoulders, being a ball and socket joint, are capable of such a large range of motion. And this being the case, when you train shoulder mobility, you have to make sure to do so from all angles. Resistance bands are the only way to do this. Because resistance bands are not dependent on gravity, you're able to achieve resistance through all three dimensions. The benefits of resistance bands aren't exclusive to the mobility training of just your shoulders. As you saw, I also use resistance bands for the mobility training of both my hips and my ankles. When you're doing mobility training, you're effectively working through restrictions and limitations, and therefore you really have to be gradual in order for it to be safe. And because of that, 
It's the uniform and gradual nature of resistance bands that makes them stand apart. And that's why you have to use them specifically for mobility training. I can't stress enough the importance of mobility training, not just for ease of movement, but also as a preventative measure for injury. Especially in our ultra dormant lives, where we're always sitting. We're sitting at work. We're sitting at home on the couch watching TV. We're sitting on the patio with our friends having drinks. We're always sitting. Now you have to understand that when we sit, our hip flexors get short. It's just anatomy. They get short, and if you don't work on your mobility, over time, the hip flexors will stay short. They'll adapt. And this causes lower back pain. In fact, by statistics, 80% of us have suffered to various degrees at some point in our life lower back pain. We need to get ahead of this and we need to start now. Because as we age, our joints only get stiffer, our muscles only get tighter. And to top it all off, many of us who do train focus so much on the resistance part and completely neglect the mobility. And all this is good for is bad posture, poor movements, and unnecessary injuries. The only way to counteract this is through mobility training. Do it guys.